Welcome to the Beyond 20 Sharewell tutorial series. This is Guy Baker. I am a Sharewell certified engineer and solutions consultant at Beyond 20. In this video, we will demonstrate how to use the new Sharewell version 9.6 and above content to display multiple versions of a form in the business object tabs based on a visibility expressions for the tabs. In all prior versions of Sharewell, if you wanted to have multiple versions of a form, say a specifics form for onboarding, where you display different data fields based on visibility expressions, you may have used layering on your form where the fields were literally stacked on top of each other with each field layer having a different visibility expression. Sharewell Content version 9.6 moves the form arrangement from the body of the form to the tabs, and this opens up a valuable method for displaying multiple versions of a specifics or the main business object form based on visibility expressions for the tabs rather than stacked layers of fields on the form. Let's begin by opening the administrator console and creating a new blueprint. Now we're going to navigate to the incident object. And you'll notice that under the new content, the incident object's default form is basically a header form that shows you information about the incident and has some links that you can use to manipulate the object. The body of the incident is now moved to the incident overview form. So we'll select that. And on, on the incident overview form, because we now have responsive or adaptive form layouts, you'll notice that we have three different form layouts for the incident. We have the large or wide screen display, which is in green, the tablet, which is in red, and the mobile, which is in blue. In each of these forms, as a section for a specifics form, which we are using for our specifics form, we're going to be displaying the summary form there. So under the large display, we have the additional questions, and then below that is the area where we embed the specifics form. So to do that, we'll right click and select control properties. We'll notice that the embedded form uses a relationship incident own specifics. It also uses the summary form, and we are not checking the box if the form type is not found, use next best, because we only, only want to show the summary form here. Now, this does require you to create a summary form for any specifics that you want to show up in the incident overview. You can choose whether or not to have the scroll bars, and you can also choose whether you want that form to be read-only or not. For our purposes, we left scroll bars enabled, and read-only is disabled. So you'll see that the same form appears in each one of the tabs. Again, always showing just the summary. And then over here on the mobile form, you have to actually scroll down to see it. So some folks on the mobile form might find that to be a little obtrusive, and they may want to move that to a tab. Next, we want to look at the specifics employee termination form to view the different layouts of the form. So first we'll look at the summary form. And you'll notice that all of our layouts are based on the smallest layout or smallest adaptive layout. So 370 wide layout. We don't want to have anything show up in the specifics form that can't be displayed in our mobile form. That way it will work on all devices. And we only have to create it once. So we've added our summary form. And we'll go back and then we'll look at our actual forms that we have. So our default form has some information on it. And let's, before we do that, let's just show you what this form looked like in the old content. In the old content, the default form had all of this information all in one place. But you'll notice it was 895 pixels wide, which means it would only work on a tablet or a large display. It would not be, be visible when you use this on a mobile device. So we want to split this form up so that it's visible on a for, uh, mobile device and also so that it's easy to navigate. So what we did was we created two different forms from this. We have page one here, which is set as our default form. And then we created page two, which has the rest of our information. 
And we want to be able to navigate these forms from incidents. So what we'll do is in the incident object, we're going to go and look at the business object because we've added two new fields in order to control navigation of our specifics forms. And those fields are called display page number, which is a numeric field with a default value of one, and specifics tab control, which is a text field. It has a default value of all tabs, and it has two values that can be either all tabs or single tab. We needed to add some controls to our form. So what we've done is on our form, we've added these controls. So on the big, or on the wide display form, we've added all of our controls so that you can see them. And then on our tablet and mobile form, we've made them so they're stacked. So let's look at what those controls do. The first one is show all specifics tabs. Simply sets the display control to all tabs. And the next one is show single specific tabs. And again, that just simply sets the specifics tab control to single tab. These have visibility expressions on them. Are the two radio buttons when you're over here on the smaller ones. They are based on both whether or not we have a specifics for this incident and whether the uh, tab control, specific, specifics tab control is equal to the opposite value. And then we have navigation items, and they are running a one step, and they have basically, they're based on whether the specifics tab control is equal to single tab or not. So then you'll, you'll see the navigation item. And what they do is they run a one step, that either increments or decrements the value in the specifics page number, specifics display page number. So it's either going to add one or subtract one. And then it makes sure that it doesn't go beyond the limits. For our purposes, we only have two pages to display. You can make this a three page or four page, whatever you want to do, but you want to make sure that your conditions are this. So for the decrement, we want to make sure the page number, current page number is no, is at least greater than one. So if it's one, we don't want to go to zero. And then to move forward, we want to increase and our action condition then needs to be that it is less than two because we have two max. If we, if we have four pages, it's less than whatever your max page is. Uh, we did not set save business object after action in case there are uh, items that are required for save. So this does not need to have a save action on it. So again, these are all shown on each of the different header pages, so you can see them. Now we're going to go over to the form arrangement for incident, and we're going to add a tab for each of the specifics form layouts that we want to display. So you'll see we have the form of the incident overview form, which is displayed and shows our summary form for our specifics. Then we've added two tabs for our specifics form. They both have the same relationship that they're based on, which is incident own specifics. But let's look at the properties so we can tell what these are. So we'll right click on the main form and look at properties. And we'll just go through this, the tab properties with you uh, one by one. So the first option is to have a, an expression that is going to base the actual expression on the specifics type name. So we'll call this the main specifics type name. You can make this anything you want. So you can just say specifics page one, or you can have specifics type name, main, whatever you want. Tab visibility is important here. So what we've done is we've created this expression for tab visibility. The first thing is make sure we do have a specifics form to display. And then the next thing we want is that 
it, either the incident specifics control is equal to all tabs, which that is the default value for that field, or the specifics display page number is equal to one, which is also the default value for that. So it's going to display for every every specifics, whether or not it has multiple pages, will display this tab unless we're on single page control and we've advanced to a second page. In the tab contents for our main page, we just simply select the relationship of incident owned specifics. The default form is just equal to default. And then for the default view, we want it to be form. Let's go over to our second page. And for the second page, if you add three, four pages of specific form layouts, they all will mimic page two. They will just have a different increment based on the page number. So we'll click on the right click and select properties. Here we've set our display name to be, or our display expression to be this type name and then a dash and then a two. So if we were had three or four pages, it would be dash three or dash four for the subsequent ones. Our tab visibility. Again, we want to make sure we do have a specific form. And then this tab is only visible when the tab control is equal to all control, all tabs, which is the default, or the display page number is equal to the number of page that we're on. So in this case, we're on two. For contents, we still have the incident own specifics relationship, but our default form is now a specific form. So we're going to, from the drop down, we click on specific form. And then when we click on our ellipsis, we want to go into each of our specifics forms and select which form we want to be the default for this tab. So for termination, we'd select a page two because there are multiples. For a new employee, for onboarding, we selected new employee. The rest of them didn't have, uh, at this time, they only have one page, so it's always going to be the default. And again, we want the default view to be form. All right, so let's see how this all looks in first. Let's, let's see how it looks in the rich client. So in our rich client, we'll open up one of our employee termination requests. And you'll see that right now, when we set this to all tabs, that it shows our overview, our main specifics form, and our page two. We set this to single, it shows overview and main until we advance the page. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that it has been informative for you. Please subscribe to our Beyond 20 LLC channel on YouTube to view more videos on Sharewell, ITIL, and other ITSM solutions provided by Beyond 20. Or visit our website at www.beyond20.com to learn more about how Beyond 20 can assist your company with ITSM training and consulting, as well as sharewell development and administration.